All right, in this section, we're going to write linear equations from their graphs, from their tables, from their points, um, all different types of information, and we're going to be able to write out a linear function for every single one of them. All right, so the first one I've given you here is a graph. Okay, so make sure you sketch this graph in your notes so you have the reference of where the equation you're going to write down came from. Okay. All right, so this first graph we've got here, uh, we need to know two things. So we're going to write this in slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b. So we need to know two things. We need to know m, this is our slope, and we need to know b, this is our y-intercept. So if we can locate those two things um, from our graph, then we've got an equation. Okay, let's start with the y-intercept. That's the easiest. It's just where the graph crosses the y-axis. That's right here. So our y-intercept is 0, 1. Okay, so just the y part of the y-intercept is going to go in for b. Okay, the slope, we need to do rise over run. Rise over run. So pretty much just the opposite of how we graphed it. Now luckily, we have one point here at the y-intercept and then they gave us this other point over here. So we can just count. We can even count to this point down here that they gave us. All right, so my rise, one, two, three. And my run, one, two, three, four. But I went left four, so that's a negative four. Okay, remember the negative, it doesn't matter, top, bottom, um, in front of, wherever it goes. Really, you never see it on the bottom, so either top or just in front of would be the acceptable way. So let's write our answer out. Y equals M is negative 3 fourths plus 1. And I forgot my X in there, so don't do that. All right, Y equals negative 3 fourths X plus 1. And that would be our final answer. So try to write the equation of the next graph and come back and see if you got it right. All right, so this is when we have a y-intercept of 3. And then a rise of run, 1, 2, 3, rise. 1, 2, 3, 4, run. And since I went up and right, those are both positive. So m is 3 fourths, b is 3. So y equals 3 fourths x plus 3. All right, so graphs are usually the easiest because you can very easily see the two the pieces of information you need. All right, so let's try something a little different. Okay, um, at the top here, I've written out point slope form. It's just a different form of a line, okay, um, where basically you don't need the y-intercept necessarily. You just need any point on the line. Any point will do and you plug that in for x1 and y1, and then you still need to know the slope. You still see m there, um, but you don't need um, anything else. Just one, any point and the slope, and you can write a line. Now, usually, you're going to be asked to write the equation of the function in slope-intercept form, which is what these are asking us to do. But you can use point-slope form and then convert it into slope-intercept from there. Okay, so. I have two different methods here. One uses point slope form and one just bypasses point slope form completely and goes directly into slope intercept. Um, you get to choose which one you like better and use that one all the time. Okay, I don't care which one works best for you. Okay, that's a personal thing. As long as you're showing your work and I can identify the correct steps, then you're good to go. All right, so we've been given a table here. Okay, we're gonna use point slope form. So I'm gonna choose any one of these four points. These um, columns are all a point. Now I'm going to choose a point that's going to be easiest. I don't want to use decimals. Those are going to be harder. Okay, and then the negative numbers are going to be harder than the positive numbers. So I'm going to choose 8, 1 as my point, just because it that seems to be the easiest. So I'm going to write this in this formula here. So that's going to be y minus 1. That's y1 equals, okay, I don't know m yet, so I'll leave that blank for a second. x minus 8. 8 is my x1. This is my x1. This is my y1. Okay, so let's find slope. Slope is the rate of change. We went over that in our last section. So if we just find the differences here, then do the y divided by the x, then we've got it. All right, so this is negative 5 to negative 3.5. That's plus 1.5. Um, negative 3.5 to negative 0.5 is plus 3. Negative 0.5 to 1 is plus 1.5. Negative 8 to negative 4 is um, positive 4. Negative 4 to positive 4 is positive 8. 
and 4 to 8 is another positive 4. So you can see how all these are the same. If you multiply 1.5 times 2, you get 3. And if you multiply 4 times 2, you get 8. So the ratios are the same. I'm going to use the 3 over 8 because we don't want a decimal inside a fraction. That looks weird. 3 over 8 is going to be our best bet for the slope there. All right, so how do we get it into slope-intercept form? Remember, that's y equals mx plus b. Okay, we're just going to distribute the 3 eighths like this. Okay, so I have y minus 1 equals 3 eighths x. All right, then it's 3 eighths times negative 8. So the way I think about this, the 8 and the divided by 8 cancel. 8 divided by 8, and that will leave me with a minus 3. Just the 3 on top and the negative in front. Okay, one more step. We have to have y by itself for slope intercept, so I need to add the 1 over to the other side. All right, so that'll look like this. y equals 3 eighths x minus 2. All right, so that's using point slope form. Okay, I like going directly into slope intercept form. This is how I learned it back when I was in Algebra 2. Okay. Um, basically, you just don't use this. We're still going to use the 8, 1 point, but instead of using the y1 and the x1, we're going to actually plug it in for x and y in the actual slope-intercept equation because the only thing they didn't tell us in this table was what the y-intercept was. We were able to find the slope by doing our um, rate of change, okay? and we know a bunch of x and y points. We can use any one of those, so I just need to find the, the letter b. So I'm going to plug 1 in for y, 1 equals. I know my m now is 3 over 8, so 3 over 8. Okay, my x is 8. That's the point I'm using right there. And then I don't know b yet, plus b. Okay, let's solve for b. Now that the only variable left in the equation is b, so I can solve for it. All right, so that's 1 equals 3 over 8 times 8. Remember, those 8s are going to cancel like that, leaving me with 3 plus b and then just subtract 3 from both sides and I get b equals negative 2. Okay, you'll notice that's the same number we got up here, so that's a good sign. We should be getting the same answer. y equals 3 eighths x minus 2. So again, I don't care what method you use, whichever one you like better, go with that method. Um, I would suggest choosing one method and sticking with that the rest of the time. Don't try to mix and match and do both. Okay, pick one method that you like best and do that every time so you get really good at it. All right, there's a couple other ways that we can do this. Um, so they could just tell us the slope and give us a random point on the line. Okay, I'm going to do um, one more of each type just so you can see. So I'll do point slope form one more time here. So we do y minus 3, that's our y1, equals negative 5, they told us the slope, times x minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to distribute the negative 5. So y minus 3 equals negative 5x. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. And then I'm going to add 3. y equals negative 5x plus 8. And there's our slope-intercept form equation of the line. All right, or they could give us just two random points on the line. Okay, so we need to be able to find the slope from two points. Okay, again, this is something we practiced in our last section with uh, rate of change, finding slope. We can use the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so I'm going to do y2, 5, minus y1, negative 3. So that's a double negative. Y, x1, or x2, 2, minus x1, negative 2, another double negative. So that's going to turn that into a plus. It's going to turn that into a plus. 5 plus 3, 8. 2 plus 2, 4. 8 divided by 4, 2. So my slope is 2. And I'm going to do the second method directly into slope intercept. So now I get to pick which point to use. I'm going to use this one because positive numbers are easier to deal with than negative numbers. So I'm going to plug 5 in for y equals 2 for m times 2 for x. So this 2 was our m, this 2 is our x, plus b. 2 times 2 is 4. And then subtract 4. And 5 minus 4 gives me b equals 1. 
So slope is two, B is one. So my slope intercept form Y equals two X plus one. All right, last thing we need to be able to do is parallel perpendicular lines. Okay, parallel lines have the same slope. Perpendicular line slopes are opposite reciprocals. Okay, opposite means you change the sign. Reciprocal means you flip it over. So if I have a slope of A over B, the opposite reciprocal of that slope would be negative B over A. Change the sign, flip it over. Okay, so we have three examples here. I'm going to do a couple and have y'all do this last one on your own. Parallel to y equals 1.8x plus 3 and through this point. So the only thing we care about in this first line is the slope. Okay, and the word that they gave us. So parallel to this means same slope. So our line has the same slope as this, 1.8x. The only thing we don't know about our line is the y-intercept. So that's why they give us this point, okay? Use the same strategies as we did in the last page, either point slope form or slope intercept, straight into slope intercept form, okay? I'm gonna go straight into slope intercept. Two is my y equals 1.8 times five plus b. All right, multiply this out and we get nine plus b equals two. Subtract the nine and b equals negative 7. So my equation of my parallel line is y equals 1.8x minus 7. Okay, your parallel line should never have the same y-intercept as the original line. Okay, if you're putting the same exact equation, those aren't parallel. They're just the exact same line. Parallel line would have to have a different y-intercept to be considered parallel to the first one. So the only thing that should be the same is the slope only. Okay, perpendicular to y equals negative 3 halves x minus 1. Again, the only thing we care about from this first equation is the slope. And then the word perpendicular, opposite reciprocal. So they gave me negative 3 halves, so I switch the sign, so mine's going to be positive, and I flip it over, 2 thirds. This is my slope, y equal, m equals 2 thirds. All right, I'm going to use my point that they gave me and go straight into slope intercept. Negative 2 equals 2 thirds times 9 plus b. 2 thirds times 9. So the way I think about this is the 9 is going to get divided by 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 2 times 3 is 6. Then I'm going to subtract 6. And negative 2 minus 6 gives me a b of negative 8. So my equation for my perpendicular line, y equals 2 thirds x minus 8. All right, y'all give this last one a try. See if you can get it right. Unpause the video. See how you did. All right, our slope on this one, we have perpendicular. So this one's a little tougher. This is a whole number, but remember, 3 over 1. So you switch the sign, negative, and you flip it over, one-third. That's our m. Okay, use this as our point. So I've got 3 equals one-third times 6 plus b. One-third times 6 is 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And then 3 minus 2 to get b by itself is 1. So our equation for this one would be y equals negative one-third x plus one. All right, so there's everything you need to know about writing equations. Should be able to do your assignment now.